Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 18th, 2024, let's get into it. <clears throat> Many of you have dogs, cats, I have my pet lizard, he hangs out with me almost every night, right here on the window, it's amazing, I always greet him, I know I'm Bat shit crazy, <laughs> but he is so cool, isn't he? <laughs> so we're just gonna kind of blaze through the news on this video. Not well. We're gonna get to me hiking today and uh, talk about those stories, but uh, let's just uh, start going through these. Switzerland. A video with the words of Prime Minister Maloney is being circulated online. Now, if you didn't know Maloney, she, she got elected in Italy, and uh, she gave this fiery speech, and we all thought that she was going to be a, a lookout for the Israeli citizens' best interest, and, and that she was the next uh, Donald Trump <laughs> for, for Italy, and uh, boy, she turned out to be a huge disappointment. Uh, oh my God. She sold Italy. I mean, she... You know, and that's the thing. That's why, you know, these politicians, the globalists, they get these people and they give them all the right words to get elected and then they turn out to be the globalist puppets that they really are. And so she's just a globalist puppet. But let's let's see what she says. And uh, there are some people saying that she didn't say this, but uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot of posts on X that say she did. Here's what she said. Defending Ukraine means defending a rules-based system. If Ukraine cannot count on our support and is forced to surrender, there is no need for us to gather here and discuss negotiations. The Ukraine translator broadcasts what the Ukraine public needed. Defending Ukraine means that the entire international community must unite and defend it. If Russia does not agree with this, we must force it to capitulate. Well, okay, I mean... I think there's like some 20 nations now that are funding <laughs> the militaries in Europe at 2%. I, you know, for them to build up and fight Russia, that's going to take a hell of a long time because, uh, you know, since the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, they, they don't really have much net in the way of natural resources. <laughs> so, in fact, they're all their economies are crashing. And, you know, I wonder how long their people are going to put up. Of course, there was just a huge big election that, 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 you know, the people said, hell no, we don't want to fight Russia. <laughs> What's the point? I mean, do you really think Russia's going to march through Ukraine and invade Europe? I mean, the globalists and the media have absolutely lost their minds. Let's get to the next post. Uh, this was Black in the Empire. Uh, if the West cares about territorial integrity, why don't they make the U.S. get out of Syria? <laughs> Why don't they make the U.S. get out of 800 nations around the world? The United States empire, you know, global hegemony. Uh, and but by the way, later on in the video, you're going you're gonna to get into all of that. I want to bait you one second, uh, because if you wait to the very last part of the video, Russia has a new transformer technology. If you ever watch the movie Transformers, uh, any of the episodes, uh, this, this is it for real. <laughs> I was watching, unfortunately, they, well, anyway, it's pretty good. Wait till the end of the video. This is the military summary channel. Russian armed forces entered the village of Razdol Ivica in the last two sides. Uh, soon the village will fall. So I just included this because they're marching all along the front lines. All right. In small increments, they're, they're moving, moving along. Uh, you know, Putin, I tell you, you got to give him credit, man. He's a very patient dude, man. You know, he could go in, kill a lot of his soldiers and just wipe fucking Ukraine off the map. But no, he's, he's just taking it easy. And he's saying, you know, we don't want to lose too many of our soldiers. Let's just keep filling, killing 1500 Ukrainians a day. You know, he likes the numbers. Uh, I, I don't know how many Russians die a day. I'm going to say maybe 50. So, you know, 50 to 1,500. I guess uh, Putin's okay. Well, he, I mean, he's not okay with that ratio. Uh, he actually put out a, a video. We'll get into that later on. Uh, here we go. This is this is pretty interesting. This is Sprinter family. Russia promised Western and Ukraine military pilots a million dollars for the kidnapped for a kidnapped 
F-16 fighter. Now, did you ever go back and watch the Clint Eastwood movie <laughs> where, we, where we stole a fighter from Russia? You ever go back and watch that movie. I can't remember what it was called. And uh, so what Russia's saying is, is if any uh, Ukrainian pilot wants to defect to Russia and flies an F-16 over, I'll read the rest of this to you. If they defect to Russian side with the arms of those uh, fight planes, the bonus will be increased. The pilot or pilots who defect the F-16 to Russia will be guaranteed an anonymity, a safe flight corridor, and escort in all antiquity. And also, and also will receive new documents and new place of residence. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. You know, I you know I they're doing this to put the fright into the uh, the, the Western countries. Imagine if and remember uh, in Iraq. Uh, what took place. You know, at the beginning of the war, the Iraqi pilots went up and then they just flew their planes over to Iran. <laughs> you know, so, so it could take place. You could have Ukrainian pilots flying F-16s over to Russia. And who knows what they're going to be armed with. They might even have nuclear weapons on them. Ah, uh, let's see. This, oh, this is terrible. Breaking. A 17-year-old guy, girl has died after Australian hospital refuses to give her lung transplant because she did not get the COVID injection. Can you believe this shit's still going on in, in Australia? What the hell's wrong with them damn people? And what, I mean, I always, you know, you always watch the old Crocodile Dundee movies, you know, and you think, oh man, these people are completely independent. They would never put up with a government like this. Well, for some reason, the Australians are. And, and by the way, Australia was originally populated by a prison population. So, I, I can't imagine, you know, criminals and prisoners putting up with a government like they've got right now. It's kind of like Canada. I never expected Canada to turn communist under that idiot Justin Trudeau. I tell you, when I look at that guy, I want to puke. All right, let's just keep going. Uh, this is uh, S-P-E-T-S-N-A-Z-007. <laughs> Spesna 7. Ukraine basically has two options, and I do agree with this, and that's why I saved this one. Surrender the Donbass regions to Russia or stay neutral forever. Uh, solidify generations of men to the, for the more mongers and end up selling your country to BlackRock after defaulting on all debt. Which would you guys choose? And, and he posed, shows a red pill, and to, where, where are you, Zelensky? Red pill and a blue pill. Uh, Garland Nixon put up a video today, and it was very interesting. He was talking about how Ukraine is just a freaking puppet of the Western nations, uh, which, you know, we're going to make sure that every Ukrainian dies. And you know what? I think it's, uh, it's about um, racism because, you know, most Europeans and a lot of people in the United States hate Slavic people, and Russia, of course, being Slavic. So they're perfectly okay with all the Ukrainians dying. And uh, I just can't believe Ukraine's going along with the whole project. I mean, it blows my mind. Uh, you know, now that Zelensky, he's already declared that for the next 10 years, he's going to be the dictator of Ukraine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's going to last that long. <laughs> I think by the end of this year, he's either going to be dead or living in a Miami uh, uh, beach house or maybe in the Caribbean somewhere, assuming we don't have global thermonuclear war under the Democrats. Uh, this was Elon Musk, uh, and he posted this, uh, and he just put two explanation points. I'm not sure what he means by that. How non-U.S. citizens are getting voter registration forms across the United States and how Republicans are trying to stop it. Well, later in the video, I'm going to talk about this more. I was telling you that the Democrats are giving all the illegal aliens uh, the ability to vote in the next election, and they've passed it. Uh, through basically executive action, and of course the Uniparty in the Congress is going along with it. So we're going to have 20 million illegal aliens voting in the next election. I don't know how Trump overcomes that, and that's why I did a video, uh, and I'm, I'll talk about this later, but you know, you can go back and watch it. Democrats win. I don't see how we're going to defeat them. Uh, this is Joshua Landis. American military says it has spent about $1 billion fighting the Houthis to support Israel's Gaza war. Can you imagine that? 
mean, we're fighting a bunch of towel heads wearing sandals down in uh, on, the, on the on the you know basically on the Red Sea, and we can't even defeat them. So let's just read the statistics here. I think it's insane. United States has conducted more than 450 strikes and intercepting 200 drones and missiles. United States official, officials worry that the conflict is simply not sustainable. Their supply of weapons from Iran is cheap and highly sustainable, but ours is expensive and our logistic trails are long. We are playing a whack-a-mole and they are playing a long game. Well, no shit. We're giving weapons to Ukraine. We're arming up uh, Taiwan to fight China. We're giving weapons to Israel to fight, uh, well, it looks like, later on the video I'll talk about this, looks like they're going to go to war with the Houthis. I mean, okay, you know, our industrial complex, we've been funding them f with trillions of dollars for, you know, 23 years. You think we have an infinite supply of weapons? <laughs> I don't think so. You think we can sustain forces at 800 forces? The American Empire can sustain forces at 800 bases around the world? I don't think so. You know, this, this whole damn thing, this whole fallacy, it's just like the U.S. dollar. It's all going to come to an end. We're going to read a couple more, and then i got to make the video because, good God, it's, uh, it's going to be kind of a long video. Uh, DC Dranko, nothing to see here, just evidence that Tony Fauci was planning to make a mutated strain of monkeypox that could start a pandemic. This is an addition to the bird flu. <laughs> oh my god, I talk about that later in the video. This now begs the question, did he have a role in developing the existing monkeypox virus? Now thank god we got Rand Paul, one of the few uh, honest uh, politicians we have in Congress, going after this little freaking troll that needs to be in jail uh you know i and boy i was against Fauci way back in the beginning in 2020 go back and watch those videos so just in dr anthony Fauci's department conceded plans to create a mutant monkeypox virus that could have started a pandemic according to bombshell congressional uh ceremony and of course they got all the documents here posted on x you can go up and read it um Here's the next post. Uh, boy, I tell you, it's just, why do you think I call these watching the world burn? <laughs> the Democrats are out to destroy the world. All right, so let's keep going. The shocking and devastating move, Russia's Moscow Stock Exchange has now immediately suspended all trading in U.S. dollars and euros, delivering a major blow to the U.S. currency. Now, is this going to devalue the dollar further? Yeah, for sure. Are uh, central banks around the world buying up gold? Yep, sure. Are they buying up silver? Sure, yes, absolutely. India is buying up silver in, in tremendous amounts. Now, are, is the world uh, divesting themselves of U.S. treasuries? Yeah, sure. I mean, the world was into uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, dollar for about 70-some percent. Now it's down to about 50-some percent. So is it happening overnight? No. Is it happening rapidly? Hell yeah. Is it going to happen by the end of the year? I don't know. I thought it was going to happen years ago, <laughs> and I lost a bet, and I had to give a friend of mine uh, silver, which I have yet to do because uh, of logistics. All right, so let's get into Megatron breaking. An hour ago, Hezbollah started a large-scale retaliation against Israel. I'll talk about this later in the video. For the assassination of a commander. The first wave, consisting of more than 100 rockets, was launched at Israel's north east, reaching all the way to Lake Tiberias. The second wave was launched just minutes ago and targeted many northern settlements, including Bayat, Josh, and H-O-R-F-E-I-S-H, -H, Horfish. in the large rocket attack by Hezbollah in the entire war so far. So like I said, Douglas McGregor, uh, which I will talk about later in the video, said that it looks like Israel and Hezbollah are going to war. All right, let's keep going. Zelensky called on Ukrainians to return from abroad. <laughs> if you, you know, if you would escape. Now, let's look at what, Biden, what the Democrats are trying to do. They're getting ready to draft young American citizens to go fight in Ukraine. Now, if I were a parent, um, now... I remember back during the Vietnam War, a lot of uh, Americans escaped to Canada. And, uh, 
you know, looking back on it, I always thought that, you know, they are traitors. I always thought, no, man, these they should have fought for the United States. Well, now looking back on the Vietnam War, I I agree with them. I, I would go to Canada. So if, if I was a young American uh, and I'm getting drafted, I'd try to get the hell out of the way. Uh, it was kind of like uh, some, some relatives of mine back during the Civil War. They were up in the uh, in Bland, Virginia. And uh, the Confederates came in to, to forcibly draft them into the Confederate Army. And the community ha uh, hid them. I don't remember the exact story. It was, uh, it was given to me by my relatives many years ago. But they actually hid them, uh, I think, under the baseboards of a church. And so the Confederates were unable to get some of my cousins and draft them into the military. Well, it's the same damn thing here. If you got kids, I wouldn't send them to Ukraine. That's just my opinion. Uh, so after the end of the war, everyone will come to restore Ukraine. There will be places where there will be security. And so, you know, would you return to Ukraine to fight the Russians? I, I Hell no. Not me. Uh, keep going. I'm praying she's right. Rachel Maddo voices fears that Trump will put her in a detention camp <laughs> if he becomes president. Delusional. These leftist lunatics are delusional. You know, what's sad about me is I used to listen to Rachel Maddo many years ago. And, uh, you know, when she was going on about the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, I was thinking, well, maybe there's something there, right? And then, and then she continued with it for months after months. And all the leftist lunatics believed that shit. All right, so let's get into the video. We got a couple of good clips. Peace out. Stay free. Say hi to the boo dog. Try not to show you the junk. There you go. Yeah. Say hi, boo dog. Say hi. Hi. So we're out walking the boss dog. His actual name is Boo, but I call him the boss dog because he knows who's the boss of the household. Well, if you go back, I think it's two videos ago. I put up a video called Democrats Win. Most people poo-pooed it. Got a couple of comments. No way they can register the illegal aliens to vote. And uh, guess what? It's hit mainstream. Mark Levin just spent 20 minutes talking about the fact that the Democrats are flagrantly registering the illegal aliens to vote in all 50 states. And especially Texas, because I've told you, Greg Abbott is a Democrat. So Texas is going blue. The Democrats have already won the election. The next big story that's getting traction, I'm not sure if I reported on this or whether I just was going planning on it, is the concentration camps that are being built all across the United States by the Democrats. So what is the reason for those concentration camps? Well, we can only speculate. Now, there's, there could be two. Now, Colonel McGregor has stated that he doesn't believe we're going to have an election in 2024. I disagree with that. I think since the Democrats have already won the election by registering all the illegal aliens, that the reason for the concentration camps is just in case there's unrest when the Democrats get 85 million votes in the next election. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. Check out that video on YouTube. By uh, It was quoted off of Carrie Lake. So that was the uh, the next big story. So you and I... I guess we're dissidents now. We're going to probably end up in a concentration camp that are being built all across the United States. The Democrats are ruthless, man. I hope you understand it. This is a war just about. Now, I shouldn't say just about. This is, this is a war. They don't care, man. These are some evil people. And uh, if you don't watch your, your buns, you're going to end up in a concentration camp just because you complained about the, uh, the fact that the Democrats got 85 million ballots not votes, ballots in the 2024 election. That's my prediction. The next big story was Putin came out with a peace proposal. It was actually a pretty good proposal considering where they are in the war. He said that Russia would get control of the Donbass and the uh, uh, Zaporia regions, and there was one other region, I can't remember. Dear friend, Thanks, um, Judge. I, I want to start with the uh, peace offering by uh, President Putin. Um, and and the words he used, we're going to play the clip in just a minute. It's a long clip. It's a long uh, statement he made. We're going to play the guts of it. Uh, the statement he made at the very end about soon as he gets assurances from uh, Ukraine, Russian forces will immediately, on the same day, withdraw. 
Chris, if we have that, please. The West is ignoring our interests and at the same time, forbidding Kiev to negotiate, all the while hypocritically calling us to some kind of negotiations. It just seems foolish. Ukrainian troops must be fully withdrawn from Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics and from the Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. And I draw your attention to the fact that it includes the entire territory of these regions within their administrative borders as they existed when they joined Ukraine. Once Kiev declares its readiness and starts the genuine withdrawal of its troops from these areas, as well as officially notify about the abandonment of plans to join NATO, our side will immediately, literally at the same minute, follow the order to cease fire and start negotiations. Immediately, literally, at the same minute. Of course, they had a much better deal on the table, uh, negotiated in Istanbul, an inch thick, uh, initialed by the negotiators until the U.S. got involved. It's not the Kyrgyzstan region, but uh, it might be, uh, anyway. And, uh, and he said everything else is negotiable, except for uh, having U.S. Uh, nuclear weapons in Ukraine or Ukraine becoming a member of NATO, that Ukraine has to remain a neutral country. So we could have ended the killing right there, been done with it. I mean, if we'd gone back to 2022 when the last peace proposal was on the table, the, the, the terms were much more favorable. Well, when you got 50,000 dead Russian soldiers, and well, I've been telling you it's about a million, because what I'm seeing right now is about 1,500 Ukrainians a day are dying on the front lines. And I don't even understand where they're getting all these people from. I mean, I know they're, they're kidnapping them off the streets, training them for four days and sending them to the front lines, but how can you have that many people that you can just keep gathering up and sending to the front lines? I mean, what is it? When Ukraine started the war, I, I can't remember, what, 30 million people, 35 million people in the country, and I don't know, six, six, 10 million fled, you know, I mean, it was, so their numbers were way down to begin the war with, of course, at that time, they almost had a half a million to a million men under arms who've all been killed. If you go back in my videos, a long time back, I told you that Millie was a traitor. And so now there is evidence coming out in addition to what he did with China, which said he would uh, circumvent uh, uh, Trump's ability to uh, defend the United States if, if, if China was to launch on the United States. That was his first acts of treason. But it's, there's, evidently there's a lot more coming out. So hold on to your jackstrap. Uh, Colonel McGregor, he's, he's on top of it. And he said, watch the news in the coming weeks. I'll be vindicated. When I told you he was a traitor, I was right. That cybersecurity guy is always right. The other thing I wanted to get into was the jab. The jab. Did you get the jab? I'm just wondering. But uh, anyway, so a lot of people are starting to find out that that wasn't a good idea. Because <laughs> there's a lot of uh, side effects that uh, people seem to be getting uh, that seem to be related to the jab and uh so nobody's getting the jab anymore so the pharmaceutical companies are losing money so what are they going to do they're going to bundle the mrna uh technology with the flu shot you gonna get a flu shot with mrna in it i know i'm not well i wasn't going to get the flu shot anyway i don't trust the pharmaceutical companies for anything anymore so uh just wanted to let you know when you if you do get try to go get a flu shot Double check, because you be you could be getting the COVID booster along with that flu shot, which is mRNA. Just saying, trying to look out for you as best I can. So getting into a couple more stories for watching the world burn June 17th. Colonel Douglas McGregor has reported that Hezbollah and Israel are on the brink of war. So if that breaks out, that's going to be one hell of a hell of a thing, I tell you. Hezbollah is armed to the teeth. I'm not sure Israel's going to survive that one. And that's what I kept telling you was it is, I'm for, I want Israel to survive. But if they go up against Hezbollah, I'm telling you, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be a hell of a fight. And that should probably drag the United States um, further into the conflict, although we're giving Israel everything they need to just to kill all the Palestinians. I wonder how many Palestinians are left at this point. 
So they started with 2.1 million. So I imagine we might be hitting up towards 100,000 dead women and children mostly. So let's, let's see. All the Christians in the United States are for that, by the way. They, they want all the Palestinians dead. So getting off of that story, the, what was? oh yeah, this was, a, this was an interesting story. Was President Xi said that the United States was trying to bait China into a war uh, or into attacking Taiwan back in 2023. Uh, and he came out with some, uh, I guess, some evidence to that effect. So uh, I tell you, the Democrats are warmongers, man. They love war. They love killing people. That's why I'm telling you, those concentration camps, I believe it. They, they, they wouldn't hesitate to throw you in a concentration If you got a Democrat neighbor, they just assume see you dead. They want you in a concentration camp, and they want war all around the world. So if Hezbollah goes in, we'll be at war there. Then we're at war in Ukraine, and then the Democrats want war with China. And they, I guess they tried in 2023 to bait Xi into attacking Taiwan. I tell you, these people appear evil, man. They want everybody dead. They want thermonuclear war. So we got a couple other stories to get to. Uh, first one is, uh, you know that uh, Biden went against the Supreme Court and he signed over uh, a lot of money to forgive student loans. So the Democrats are buying all those students, those student votes. So that was one way. He just signed another executive order where the spouses of, uh, I want to say legal immigrants, but uh, anyway, they can't be deported now and they will be allowed to vote. So that's another couple hundred thousand votes the Democrats have pulled out, bringing illegal immigrants into the voter rolls. Just trying to let you know what's happening there. So we'll keep going with the stories as I get them in my brain. One little tidbit of good news, unless you're a pro-life person. Uh, the uh, Supreme Court passed, uh, uh, led, well, a verified legislation that basically make it legal in all 50 states to use the abortion pill. So now abortion is legal, at least in the first trimester, in every state in the United States. Pretty much taking away the abortion issue from, from the Democrat Party to make a big deal about it. Because now women can go out, any woman anywhere in the United States, buy up some pills, take them, and, uh, and be done with it. The other story I wanted to get to was the bird flu. You're starting to hear a lot about the bird flu, and I've told you what, how that needs to work. Is You know, don't get, well, you, you do what you want. You do whatever your physician recommends. But if we don't uh, do vaccinations, the, the flu will run its course and eventually uh, die out, as, as with any pandemic. And that's what would have happened to COVID without the mRNA vaccines. And it did happen anyway. So we, we have the evidence to, to look back and see what happened with it. Uh, even though the, I guess the pharmaceutical companies will argue that the vaccines helped eradicate the disease. Uh, the other thing I wanted you to do for the bird flu is uh, the wellness company, TWC.com, the wellness company.com. Uh, now, I'm not, I don't get paid to promote this, I, but I'm telling you, they, they had a, a, a video here recently where somebody was interviewing somebody from the company, and you can buy a, a kit. And in that kit is hydroxychloroquine. And they're, they're saying that hydroxychloroquine along with another drug that's in the kit can be used to treat bird flu. So if you wanted to go that route rather than getting another jab for the bird flu, uh, an mra and hay vaccine for the bird flu, it's up to you. I'm just giving you options for you to consider. I know that I'm, I, I, you know, I remember, good God, I, way back during COVID, there was a girl at the VFW and uh, just a quick story. And her, the doctor had prescribed, even back then, there were some good doctors, and he prescribed hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID because her father had gotten COVID. Uh, and, uh, you know, because of all the bad publicity that the, uh, the FDA had put out and people were believing it, she grabbed the hydroxychloroquine out of his medicine cabinet and threw it in the garbage. I mean, that's how brainwashed people were back then. And I told her, man, I said, well, man, you should have just brought it in. I would have paid you for it. I would have bought it off of you. And she goes, you would really take hydroxychloroquine? I said, yeah, just like I'd take ivermectin. You know, ivermectin's been around for many, many years, you know. People just didn't know. They didn't understand. And uh, the, the brainwashing, really, the CIA, that PSYOP, that was the best PSYOP. Well, January 6th is the next best PSYOP I've ever seen in my lifetime. Those two are, are 
they'll go down in history because they deceived the most people. Of course, the Ukraine PSYOP, when the war first started, I think people are catching on now about how the war really started, how it's been going on since 2014. And, you know, that was a civil war in Ukraine. And, you know, so people are starting to get the background, although I imagine there's still a lot of pro-Ukraine people out there that are going, rah, rah, let's send another $200 billion to Ukraine. Hoorah! That's where I want my tax money going. How about you? So a few other pieces of news you might want to get into. Uh, first is Putin. Uh, he's going to uh, North Korea. Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, will pay a friendly two-day state visit to North Korea. He's expected to arrive in Pyongyang on Tuesday. The Russian leader then heads to Hanoi at the invitation of the Vietnamese general secretary. Well, this is Vladimir Putin's first visit to Pyongyang since 2000. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un extended the invitation last year during his visit to Russia's Far East. The Russian leader is also expected to spend two days in the Vietnamese capital Hanoi with officials from both sides to discuss the prospects for trade, scientific and cultural cooperation. To, um, it's basically to solidify relations is what the, the reason given for the visit. But uh, the other thing that, that you might not know about was Russia gave, I, I, I know one for sure, it might have been more than one intercontinental ballistic missile uh, with the warhead so that North Korea can strike the United States if, the, if they so desire to do so. Now, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall to understand the terms of that agreement. You know, I'm wondering if he handed over the launch codes for that intercontinental ballistic missile, because it could be that he just stationed it there and that is part of the, the Russian, um, you know, triad, so they can launch from another place. But I don't know. Uh, maybe they did hand over the launch codes. I haven't heard anything that says that they didn't. So uh, that's an interesting twist of events. And just to add to that story was, uh, you remember when Trump was solidifying relations between the United States and North Korea? Then the Democrats got in power <laughs> and turned North Korea to Russia and made them an enemy again of the United States? That's what Democrats do. Just wanted to point that out. We were almost there. I think Trump might have even had on the table to get rid of some of the Korean North uh, nuclear weapons. Democrats shot that all to hell, didn't they? They want war, baby. War, war, war. Democrats, war. Warmongering Democrats, war. Two other stories I just thought of. Uh, one, uh, it maybe it's a recent development, but Turkey has applied to become part of BRICS. And I wanted to just talk about BRICS for just a second. You know that in September, there's going to be a huge meeting among all the uh, BRICS nations. I, I wonder if Turkey's going to be in that meeting. <laughs> They're actually supposedly a NATO member. But you got to remember, Turkey applied to become part of the EU way back when they became uh, part of NATO. And the EU never let them in, even though they offered to let Ukraine into the EU. So I imagine that pisses Turkey off quite a bit. You know, Turkey has the second biggest army in, uh, in, in Europe. you got United States being the first and Turkey being the second. So they're, they're not to be trifled with, that's for sure. So uh, I just thought that was interesting that Turkey was trying to get into the BRICS. And then, of course, in September, there's going to be some developments. The other huge news that uh, you probably didn't hear about was now we are sanctioning uh, China. Uh, so I guess that any any bank in China that is accused of selling, um, you know, helping Russia uh, get weapons from China, uh, they're going to get sanctioned uh, by Janet Janet Yeltsin. So that's uh, that's another stake in the coffin for the dollar. So I hope you uh, you're holding on to your jack straps. You know, you know, there's a lot of a lot of interesting things to think about. You know, what's going to happen when the government can't give $10,000 a month to every illegal, you know, the 20 some million illegal aliens in the country. You know, right now they're living high on the hog on your and my tax dollars. Well, phony money. <laughs> if you want to call them dollars, they, you know, we'll call them monopoly money. They're living high on the hog on that monopoly money. But when that monopoly money ain't worth anything, all those people are going to be on the street. We're going to have 20 million illegal aliens roaming around on the streets pissed off because they don't have anything to live on no more. I mean, I guess, you know, the next financial system, they'll be bringing it in, but there's going to be a time of transition, which is why I have silver and gold in various warehouses uh, around. 
Just uh, just saying, something to think about, huh? What are they going to do when they're not getting $10,000 a month? You know, I was, oh yeah, and then the other story I thought was pretty cool was uh, Trump actually went into Detroit. <laughs> he was, I think he was at a black church. And uh, they were all they were all shouting Trump 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 Trump. Now this is in the hood. And in fact, it might have been one of the pastors. He got up. He says Trump Trump. He, even Obama never came to the hood. He says Trump's in the hood, man. Trump's in the hood. It was it was hilarious to watch. And uh, I thought that was and that's what Trump's got to do. You know he's he's got to he's got to overcome 20 million illegal alien votes. I mean I don't even know how that's possible, but. Uh, but if he can get, you know, the, the black vote and the Hispanic vote, that'll, that's a long ways to getting there, uh, especially if he just keeps visiting these inner cities. I think, well, what was the other inner city he was in? I think it was, wasn't it Philadelphia? He went into the inner city there. Uh, oh, the other piece of news that I found interesting, just because I'm out enjoying a beautiful day here in Florida, is uh, there's a heat wave going across the Midwest. And I remember, you know, everybody said, isn't it hot in Florida? Oh, my God, it's terrible down there. Well, right now it's about 89 degrees with a nice breeze and low humidity. And I'm just out really enjoying the day. And I thought I heard it up in Chicago, it might have gotten up to like almost 100 degrees. <laughs> Can you imagine being in Chicago at 100 degrees? And Detroit was pretty hot, too, and all across the Midwest. So we're having some damn good weather here in Florida right now. Now, I know that, that that can change. That can flip on a dime. But anyway, I'm just saying, just saying. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler. That nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.